topic that the chairman's already discussed, and that is the request you have received concerning private roads. Uh, Mike has worked on this, um, and Chad, with my request, and also Robin concerning some of these projects. Uh, the question was asked, well, how much is it going to cost to repair these private roads? <clears throat> Tell me which private road it is, then we can look at how much it's going to cost, because they're all, they're all particular in certain sense of the word that it'll all be different. But we need to discuss the policy, the priority, whether we're going to bid this out for somebody to do, whether you're going to, as Robin's already said, increase our uh, personnel, and what kind of time frame are you talking about, and what impact, Robin, depending on how many it is, what it is, that will have on where you are already, unless it's bid out. Is what I'm so, Mike, you want to talk about your recommendation on policy? Um, when we first started looking at it, we knew that there were there were going to be issues that, uh, that we all had to, uh, as far as getting all these dirt roads uh, taken care of, we knew that we couldn't just go out and take over 150 brand new dirt roads that we added to the inventory all at one time. And just behind the map, you've got a, a copy of Mike's policy um, in your book. So if you'll flip on, flip over behind the roads, behind the green paper, there's a policy back over. So, um, so what we tried to, me and Chad and Robin, we tried to start looking at uh, what kind of criteria did we want to come up with for how would we would accept a private dirt road. And uh, in speaking with Walter about the easements that these people have, uh, Walter does not think that we need to have, that we have to obtain uh, a signature or uh, an easement deed or whatever from 100% of the people on the road. So you know, what we came up with is that we would get a petition signed by 75%. If at least 75% of the people on the road want us to come in and grade it, then it's worth us you know, spend a little bit of time moving forward. And Mike, before you go any further, explain that a little bit more because the board has always been dealing, as you and I discussed, with the fact that we have to have right-of-way signatures from all the parties or either we have to condemn that property. The, the statute, the Georgia statute says that, that those people, when they have an easement uh, to get to and from their property, that that easement covers the entire length of the road. You may be the first house on the road, but your easement goes all the way to the back, for lack of better terms. And uh, so, you know, according to Walter, uh, in his uh, studying of this uh, topic, he he feels like that that if you know a certain percent of the people relinquish their easement to the county, if you have an easement on that road, you're relinquishing the easement on the entire road. So Walter feels like he can defend that, that if we're ever challenged, that that's, that that's how he can defend it, is that we're, you are relinquishing your entire easement on the entire road. And if we get a certain percentage of people that are willing to relinquish their easement, then, uh, then we should move forward. And you know, there one of the places out on Carter Way has a uh, is in a trust that has twenty some odd heirs. No way that I mean the, the amount of money and staff and resources it would take to get twenty plus people to sign an easement is probably and, and the length of time. So that's why you know the attorney said, hey. If you get a certain percentage of it, you don't have to have 100%. Just get as much as you can get. But so. you will have to have a survey. That's right. And uh, 
deed work? The deeds problem. We, we will have to have it surveyed, and we will have to have the deeds going up because what you what you want to make sure of is that the road as it sits today is actually inside that easement that these people have. Uh, because there's several places that we can point to in the county where the road is not in the easement. Uh, they've got easements, but that's not where the road is. And what we want to, what we as staff have not got to make sure of is that we are inside that easement. Those roads have shifted over the years based on just usage, the way somebody drove. There, um, there's, there's a road uh, up in the north end of the county that uh, the, the easement goes right through a big wetland pond. Well, what did, they didn't go through the wetland pond, they went around it. So, but the easement still goes through the wetland pond. So, in order for us to be able to accept that easement, we need to make sure that where we're going to be out there grading and maintaining is if that road is inside that easement. And if we, if it is outside the easement, then Walter thinks that we got to get some additional paperwork for that. So, and by all of that, all the, based on all those comments, y'all take action at the next meeting to accept some of these or any of these. We're, we still have work to do before <clears throat> Robin's people are able to go on that property. Mike, I just have a question. I want to ask you. I know this is not only this. Probably never will be places like that, like Gaines Lane. Gaines Lane should be on there. There are pictures of Gaines Lane, Carter Way. Yeah, I don't think it's called. I don't think it's called Gaines Lane. It's, it's behind. I, I, it's, it's on the. It's on there because yeah. it's on the. It's on that map. Uh, but it, it may not be called Gaines Lane. No, it's behind. It's behind Gaines Lane, Lane. but I, it's. I know which one you're talking about. Yes, right. so they just have an easement to get back there, and yeah. I tell you, that's how been on. <laughs> that's right. But no, we, it's. Uh, I mean, it's there. We do. Uh, we do know that it's. Uh, we need help. It's, it needs, they, they, those folks need help. That's right. They definitely need help. Yeah. It's Blood Swamp Road. Blood Swamp Road's on there. Mm -hmm. I know it's on there. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Go ahead and get back there. Like I said, y'all are going to have to give us some priorities. We can't, we can't shoot all of them at one time. Is there a way? I don't mean to be hard, but these people on these private roads knew they were on private roads when they purchased. Is there a way to regain some of this expense that we're going to incur with all this easement work, deed work, and equipment to get it? I mean, 50 50. I think that's a question that the uh, attorney can answer us. But you have done that on paving assessments over the years. Now, the difficulty, I think is if you go and look at Carter Way, Mike, your ballpark guesstimate on having Carter Way to a standard that is safe for the public to travel on is what? 75,000 right now. The dirt. The dirt to fill that hole in and get it packed back in, probably 75,000. Widen anything? Uh, when we get across the across there, I have not been back behind the uh, the the washout, but up to the washout is in pretty good shape. So my point being, if we take this and, and let's say it's uh, another twenty thousand, let's say we're at a hundred, close to it, and you split that, then are those people going to be able to pay, or will they pay fifty thousand dollars over? whatever time period you say. Our assessment policy calls is 10 years. 10 years and you have an interest rate. So 
based on the current policy, it probably will be difficult for them. Uh, but we need direction of some kind. I mean, if we're just going to say anytime somebody comes up and gives it or, or wants it, as Chairman said, his idea was that the commission would determine whether or not it would be accepted or <clears throat> recommended as opposed to the public recommending it. That's just something we need to get from y'all to, to tell us how you want to go about it. And uh, I'm concerned about what I just mentioned, the safety concern of these, because when you take it, it's not just a matter of hauling in some dirt. And you've got the drainage, but you also have to have the road to a degree of safety that we don't incur additional liability. Is that's that? Right. That's right. We got to we got to make sure that there's the adequate clear zone. Uh, you know, uh, the road can be wide enough for two vehicles to pass. Some of these roads aren't wide enough for two vehicles to pass. They have to drive off on the side of the road or off in somebody's yard. So we got to we're going to have to do some widening. We're going to have to build drainage, and uh, and we got to make sure we got clear zones. Uh, I mean, we're battling one right now up, you know, one of our county roads up off of Coleman Road Northwest. A guy struck a tree behind the uh, behind the right of way, you know, but behind what we maintain. So, I mean, we're, that's one of the things we're battling right now. We, uh, Mark brought up whether or not we would assess a cost to the property owner. On a private road, if so, how much and how would it be handled over what period of time? Well, again, you know, I hear that, but most of these private roads uh, just happens to be in an area where they folks just cannot afford to any kind of an assessment. Now, I'm not saying that they. Same thing. Is there a number? But even if you set it at a smaller number, you're still not getting to where you need to be to go in there and do it the way it should be is, is as Mike says, it's going to going to be fairly expensive to do it. So how do you address it? I mean, we're thinking that Pup, uh, Robin's crew and, I, and our guys, we've looked at it. We think on the, on the low end that uh, for a mile of road, putting in drainage pipes, building ditches, cross drains, uh, build up we're at least uh, fifty to sixty thousand dollars a mile. At least, I mean, on a minimum. Now, if you get into something like Carter Way, that's got the big washout, you know, of course, that's going to be a lot more. Uh, but you know, we could get over there to a mud swamp road that already has some ditches, already has some drain pipes, uh, cross drains, and everything up like that. That it doesn't cost us sixty thousand a mile. So we're thinking, you know. 50, 60,000 miles is probably a good average on what it will cost us a mile to bring up a these uh, private roads. Why do we do a special tax district for them? <coughs> I'm sorry? Do we do a special tax district for them? If we take yeah. Over, if, we take over the, if it's a private road and we take it over, then the, road, the people that are living on that road become a special tax district and they pay for basic finance. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we've got our assessment. Yeah, plan that we can go ahead I mean that you can do that with. We set the interest on our tax assessment the other day. Um, but again, you're talking about specifically, let's just, let's go the part of way where our problem is. We're probably talking about $100,000? $100,000 say no. You know, to go in there on that road. And you've got 10 property owners basically that live in there. And the problem is you've got some that just owns property but it has no structure on That just owns parcels. So if we get a tax, if we get a, if you got, say, say 75 is a number, 75% is a number. If you got 75% of the people to give you the easement, easement we use that same number, well, if you get the easement done, then the whole road becomes a, a tax, a special tax district. So whether you own property, whether you, whether you have property in there or not, it, at that point, it becomes a, a, tax, you know, a special tax until it gets paid, or until it gets whatever percentage is we want to pay of it. And I'm not saying we got to charge the whole thing, 
Okay. But there's got to be some kind of incentive. Get something out of it this, instead of just. Well, there's got to be some some way to stop all 175 people roads or however many 150 roads. 201, isn't it? 201 total. 50 of the 150 of those are dirt. Is that correct, Mike? So well, we would have hmm. to have. If you go back to 150 roads before we paved them, we had eight route graders instead of six. So <laughs> right now we could not grade roads every 10 days adding those to the roads. We would have to add another route in to help. That was my that was my worry is how to get well, around. Let, let me say this and I apologize that I had to get the beginning of it, but I had to get Covington to the next call. <laughs> but here's what the I mean, as y'all know, the issue is behind it. We have we have probably that have been specifically identified by citizens that's come to the commissioners with four different roads in this community that we have problems with. We're not talking about all hundred and fifty roads. Um, kind of to tie it back into what we're talking about about the road build-up program at the same time, I believe that we have to start somewhere uh, to addressing some of these. Our issue is we can't address these private roads simply because they are private roads. I don't think we need to get anywhere near <coughs> saying that we're, our goal is, is to take in all of these private roads. We don't want to do that. There's a ton of private roads in this community that we do not need to take in. And I don't mind to say it. Kinderloo, Stone Creek, those are paved roads, subdivisions, but they are private roads. And we don't need to get into that responsibility of saying that we're going to take those roads in. We need a process, I think, that Mike, if you didn't already present it, Mike had worked on a process uh, requirements for the qualifications for these roads, which is going to restrict some of them. Um, but the need that we have before the commissioners right now are these four roads that we've got a problem with. What I, my thought is, is that we need to figure out a way that we can address a private road if it becomes a problem. Otherwise, to us, it's not a problem. But we've got, for example, Carl Way. We've got 10 families out there right now that their only way out is trespassing. Of course, that's what they're doing. Is that all right, Mike? Are they going around through that marking? No, so they can't get to mark. It's, it's washed out through the woods. Yeah. Uh, they're having to go out uh, the gas line uh, out to Spain Ferry through another man's property. Yeah. Well, that's their only way out. Well, I mean, he, he doesn't like the fact that they're tearing up his property. Um, and, and so that's brought on another set of, in, of issues. However, he's been generous enough recognizing the fact that there's a problem waiting on us commissioners to resolve this issue so that they can come out the way they need to come out rather than coming across his property. Yeah. And we've had issues out there. I mean, you know, with this most recent rain, they're bogging down all out there in his yard, kind of like they are out here in my yard. But on a much grander scale. So my question is, is that I don't want it to, I don't think we have a need that we need to get so broad in thinking that we're going to take in all these roads. We need to think about the issues that is in front of us right now, set that model up, develop a plan, and then in the future, if we have an issue with a road, then we have a process that we can go through to take that road into, into uh, the public system. Yeah, I agree. Uh, <coughs> we need to take care of the ones we've got immediate problems right now. But I think if we're going to have this policy, it's got to look at the fact that some, once, we, once we take in these four roads, then there's going to be four more. four roads that, won't, that people want to take in because they got a problem with it. And it's going to be the next four roads after that. So there's got to be some room, some way. To, if, they say, if people have a problem, they, if they're willing to pay a little more taxes or willing to pay whatever to help. And it, I'm not saying the whole thing, but to help pay for part of what we got to do to go in there and get it fixed for us. Steph, can you um, bring those numbers? Just ballpark it. Just the example we had a few minutes ago with $100,000 worth of repairs and you've got 10 people that live there, if they paid it over the 10 years, 
um, with the current interest rate, you're looking at about fourteen hundred and fifty dollars per year. <coughs> that's if they that's if they paid the full hundred. That's 100, if they thousand. paid the full hundred thousand. And you have a paving assessment that's the, that's system already in place under the tax commissioner. It hasn't been used in years. It's, it's like years. you are, you are, you. they are still trying to collect it on the last paving assessment, which I think has really gone beyond the 10 years. Oh, What's yeah. happened is they're not able to collect, right. and they're down to, you know, it's not a lot, now, yeah, $10,000. But it's probably 20 years old since y'all did any paving assessment. Yeah, it's been, it's been at least 20 years since and we've done paving. Unless the property sells and, and they can get the taxes that way. But usually they they can't collect a lot. So the assessment is just like a tax. I mean, it, it's, it's considered it, just like just like it, an additional It tax. goes out with their property taxes every year. And we, yeah. we don't have any, more, any problem collecting the assessment versus the regular tax. No, well, <laughs> actually, you do. They, they, I have heard that out of them. They said they were thanking God that they were close to finally finishing that last one because it's been a horrendous collection problem. And I don't even know where the roads were built, but it's that old. I mean, it's gone on forever. If they don't pay it, what are you going to do? Yeah, you, they assign the, you know, to the property, and the property sells, they'll get it back when the property sells. That's about the only way. You can't go take the dirt back. Yeah. Well, on the situation with taxes, what do we do is why not pay the property taxes? Same with that. Same thing. Or, or, but if it's a property like a, 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 resident, a residence, they can take it on the courthouse steps and sell it or a farm or whatever. But it's hard to sell a piece of road. <laughs> 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 you can't sell a piece of road on the courthouse <laughs> That's the reason I said instead of, well, I don't know. Like I said, I, I, I was thinking more of a tax district. That way, everybody's property is in that mm -hmm. district. And if you get saved, that's people say, so we got a problem with it, we need this fixed. We're going to do this. Then everybody in there, whether you live in the, like the, the people on um, Hannah States, the guy that lives in there, well, I don't want to go down the dirt road. Well, your property's on the road, and you're part of the tax. So you're, tar you're, you're part sure. of the district. Mm -hmm. That's right. I, I, mean, I hear you. And I, You're saying property owners. My only concern is property owners. Property owners. Property owners. Property owners. Right. So you're talking about like the district, not just not the not the, the not the not the not the road, but the the whole the, all the people that touch that road, their property makes up that district. Right. So you're talking like the utilities, or like the um, street lighting, like the street lighting district, district or fire district. Well, I, I, I guess my, my concern is just be the the, the amount, of course, that each. Each one to be expected to pay each year. At the end of the day, we, we are talking about a current taxpayer that paying with a messed up road and having to cut through somebody's yard right now. Yeah. They've been doing it for years. So that's that's my, my, my thought process. They still a taxpayer. But you know, the extra amount, really, everybody ain't necessarily don't have. Like I said, I might say 100%, maybe 35%. Maybe the county pays 65%, and the, so the property owner pays 35%. skin in the game, to speak. Well, I think, I think that would deter some people just saying, I, hold my, I want y'all to take over my dirt road. That's right. But unless they really got a problem, they're not going to. They don't, they don't want to pay extra taxes, so unless they really have a problem, they're not going to, they're not going to come to us. But have a town hall meeting with those residents. We did. We're out of the couple of times. Put that date down. I'm on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm out of town. Vice chair, we're going to have a meeting. Join. I don't need an assembly, though. Join. I'm off. Join. Hey, I understand. I mean, I fully understand what you're talking about. That, that you know, they need skin in the game. Um, I just do have a concern that particularly the roads that we're having trouble with right now, I don't know that those people will be able to afford any additional taxes. Now, I'm, I, and I don't know what their finances are. I'm just saying they're living where they're at because that's what they where they could afford to live. So those, that it, it just becomes a bigger and bigger problem, and it does. Every time we try to address it, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Um, and I, I want to, you know, Mr. Marshall said it. You know, some of those folks that live there are 
paying taxes now. And primarily, they're paying taxes and the only service they get is emergency service. The problem we have at Carter Way, we've got a difficult time providing emergency service to their citizens in Carter Way if we had to do it today. So it's a big problem. So we do have a certain higher level of obligation on some of these roads to be able to get in there to them in case there's a problem. If there was a dry season inside Carter Way and we had a structure fire there, we probably wouldn't be talking about this problem tomorrow because it would probably wipe them all out. I mean, literally. So it, it, it is a big issue, and so I'm hoping that we can come up with a way, and I think that through some, some guidelines here, I want to truly avoid the fact that people that live on a private road just say, hey, this is a great idea, I want you to take over the private road. Because I don't think it needs to be that easy. But I do think that there needs to be a process to where the commissioners can identify a private road that needs to, be, that we need to make some improvements on. And we can legally do it, and the only way we can do that is for it to become a public road. No, I don't disagree. I don't disagree with that at all. I just, like I said earlier, I think that we've got to have something in place that is going to be some type of a deterrent for people to just want to turn the road over to the okay. Our only other option that we have, in, in my opinion, and again, I'm sure once legal gets through it, it'll get, it'll get beat all the pieces, but to get temporary easements when a need is there, get a temporary easement to go in there, do work that needs to be done, but it's still a private road. Get the work done. But it also <coughs> means that then at that point that you're all you're not going to have the ability to go back in there and do the maintenance that probably needs to be done to make sure you don't have this issue again in right. the future. As y'all recall, two years ago we that's what we did. And now because of the lack partly because of the lack of maintenance. We're back where we were at. I think at, at that point, the county engineer would be <clears throat> requesting the affidavit to relieve him personally and his fee from all liability because <coughs> it would be tremendous. To follow your question, we had discussed this earlier about the needs that the attorney discussed with you when you met with him about survey and deed. So if they <coughs> provide that, and we're going through this process. If it doesn't become public, are you going to give it back to them? I mean, are you going to reimburse them for their expenses that they spent? The survey. Reimburse who? The property owner that pays for this. I don't think they're saying the property owner is going to pay for it. No, we well, I mean, they were. Well, I beg your pardon. Well, well, I mean, that's my, I mean, we, you know, we're having to go in there and get this easement. You're not going to get individual property owners to go in there and survey that road out. I mean, for us to get, for us requesting the easement, that's something that we're going to have to do. No different than we would if we need an easement for a tail ditch or something. We have to identify where that tail ditch is going to be at so that we know exactly where it's at and where we can go and not go. Just ask it. It's a can of worms. <laughs> Ooh, at the very least. But we need to find out, give some direction to the county on how we're going to be able to get this issue resolved because we do have a problem primarily on one road, but we have a problem that's been identified on four different roads currently in the county. So we've got to figure out what we're going to do. Deer in the tree. Robin also has a property owner that uh, has been contacting her. She and I talked about it. She was going to hold off a response until after this retreat. And that's off of... Chris Circle. It's basically a, a drive, a driveway into their property. And it's crossing uh, a ditch. A tributary, whatever you want yeah. to call it, and it's blown out, and they want to know when we're going to come fix our 
drive, which is not our drive, it's their drive. Yeah. Off the right away. It's made more than a big culvert pipe. It's yeah. not even like a... It's $18,000 worth of pipe. And the pipe we've got another lady who's called that uh, I don't have her address right off the top of my head, but she has a special needs <laughs> child and a child with ADHD on a private road, and she wants it accepted. Again, I don't know the address. I just know that in the last 30 days, we have gotten more questions about this. Because people are starting to get well, wind that, that was being considered. Well, historically, we probably deal with, I know I do, a lot of these private roads that they never come still. Because we explain to the citizen that it's a private road, and they never go any further with it, but probably every time we have a storm, we have to call, we get a call from all of those roads. But we constantly remind them that it's a private road and we give them suggestions on what they can do, you know, because they can call scrubs or round tree. And, you know, um, I think Ham Estates, when they were in trouble, Jim Bob Peters, that used to work for us, lives behind them, and he volunteered his time and they bought the dirt. And, but we made suggestions on things they could do, but they never came to y'all. You know, so I think there's a lot more out there. A lot there. more than before. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing so happened to That mm -hmm. picture you sent, that's in a, sub, uh, in a mobile home park. Mm -hmm. that it, all of that is private. Mike, you look at that. I think the big concern now is just the sewage. The, the sewer uh, just sitting out there. It's the sewage. <laughs> in the water. But one of the things that we had talked about among the staff is a lot of these private roads are inside of mobile home parks, mobile home parks. And we don't think we should even consider a, a road inside of a mobile home park because if if you own a mobile home park you're you're charging rent. You should be the one keeping up the road, not the camera. But, that, but there's but a lot of them on this list where it's out of mobile home park. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, yeah. you, you, can, you can work through that criteria that eliminates those roads and takes those off the list. That doesn't qualify. So yeah, they don't identify. And, yeah. and one don't that, mean you won't get complaints. Yeah. Yeah. And ones that you're the only person that lives on that road. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 It's basically yeah. a driveway. Can't, can't do those either. The big difference between a lady with a child of ADHD versus nine residents that can't, an ambulance service can't get to them. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the criteria needs to look like, but I don't agree it with it you. Really I mean, well, at this particular one, I mean, we've got, we've got a family out there with a special needs child that has to ride a, a special van bus has to come in and pick them up, and they haven't been able to get out because the road, because the van can't get to them. She wanted to know if she could build a bridge across that washout so she could wheel the child to the bus stop. <laughs> I'm just saying, come Maybe on. she needs to look for a new house. Well, I think, I think the, the issue of safety definitely would need to be in the equation. When you're talking about, say, the emergency vehicles need to be able to get to the, if they were called, they can't get in there for sure. I think that's because that's, one of the roles of government is to be able to provide safety or ensure some type of safety. For the residents, I mean, at least have where they can get there, get to it because of their issues. That this one would be a criteria that needs to justify. Well, again, um, we've got we've got a real need right now that we need to address, and we need to figure out how we can do it. The last time we addressed that need out of that kind of a, an emergency for the benefit of public safety. That's how we get what we did the last time. Do we want to do that again in this particular situation to get this issue resolved and then continue to look at this and develop the criteria that in the future that if we want to take in um, private roads into the public road system, we can do that today. Keep in mind, we can do that today, but the ordinance says it's got to be a paid road. So, that's what deters most of those people from getting their road out of a 
private road status into a public road status because that road has to be brought up before we can accept it. It has to be brought up to the county standards, which is a paved road. Now, I don't think we, and I, well, I, I don't know, think about it. I, I know that we do not need to lower our standards unless we're going to do something specifically to address these public roads, private roads, and that's where the discussion originally started. I just want to tell you, we have a need right now on a particular road that we need to figure out how we're going to address that need today and get it taken care of so the staff can have some direction and we can move forward. Do we have the right now to deem that an emergency situation and to, and to move forward with taking that private road in and repairing it? Without, we have the means today, as we did two years ago, to go in there and make the repairs that needs to be made, and then you're out of there and done. Yeah, today is a private road. We're private repairs. Well, I mean, how many times are we going to keep doing that? Well, how many times does it rain like it has? 10, 12, 14 inches. Well, you may not see it. I'm here. in favor of just patching it again without some long-term solution. I know we've had problems with blood swamp, but nothing like this. Uh, where we've been called out to take <coughs> no, nothing, nothing we could have built short of a bridge uh, would have taken that. With the fact that a, a dam upstream broke uh, and consequently broke that dam, nothing, nothing short of a bridge could have could have stopped that road from washing. Again. We would have. It's not going to. I mean, yeah. it, it's two years ago that road had been brought into the into the inventory. That road would have been no different than Martin Lane, which is right next to this road. We would have went in there and made the repair because it was a part of it our road. We can't go in there and repair a part of the way because of this property. What, what is it? Is it, is it, is it, is it would it be any type of way similar to the condemning a, a right of way? Like uh, when we want to uh, put a road and then no one wants to sell a piece of right, can we just condemn the road? No, I mean, we could, get, we could go get a. Uh, I mean, we still have the paperwork from two years ago. We just update the update the dates, update the, the thing to get the people to sign it again for the emergency purposes, like the chairman signed it. It gives us a 60-day temporary uh, time to go in there and fix the road. And when we when we walk away, we walk away, and it's back there again. And that's basically what we did two years ago. Yeah, and that's basically. I mean, I heard Mike say that the dam broke up upstream too, but it was already a fair amount of erosion on the side of the road because of no maintenance on the road. Uh, probably more than likely there's, these roads are really dams between the ponds, uh, and the beavers probably had a large role to play in that from the standpoint of just creating dams rather than the water just flowing through. So consequently, all of that and then a perfect storm that we got when we got all that weather created the problem that we had. Well, Scotty's right. You're looking at these four roads that you have in here. You're looking at these four that you have in here. Yes, ma'am. That's the four that y'all. That's the four that we buy them. That's the mission. Well, that's going to be an hour. We're talking about the cost for these four roads. What would we be talking about? Cost? Yeah. Probably, if to, to bring them all, all four of them up, we'll probably look at two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, we're probably talking about a hundred thousand dollars on the car away right off the bat. I mean, that one road probably a hundred thousand dollars, and then uh, and then probably another hundred thousand to bring the other three up. I'm not looking for a motion. This is not a meeting for a motion yeah. on that part. Well, you, but what the staff needs is some direction. Yeah. I mean, to, 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 they need some direction because I would like to get some direction from the commissioners so that they can begin that process to move forward on getting these issues resolved as soon as possible. Some of these folks, these folks from this particular way on Carter Way, they've been without a way to come and go since 1st of December. What's that, Mark? You 
you may could get the majority property owner out there on the card away to assume the majority of the I'll expense. let you talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> we already have. You won't have a choice. And that ain't going to happen. Well, staff, go for it. Go for go for go for yeah. so Explain what? Are you saying that we that we that we go repair this under emergency <coughs> situation? We repair it, but we don't move forward with taking that into our inventory. If we're not prepared to move forward quickly with adopting a process for taking in private roads, then yes, I'm saying can staff get direction to move forward with an emergency repair? On those four roads. Let's go back to Scotty's comment or somebody's comment. Like, what if we just condemned the whole road and we just took it over? Well, that's safety, some sort of safety problem, and we just incorporated our road system and you know. Well, that's not going to change the expense, though. No, no we not. can do that, probably, but that's, you're not going to change the expense of what it's going to take to do that. But then now, do we have to go forward with a process of how to do it? I mean, if it's an emergency and we by right can deem it an emergency, condemn it, take it in, then we don't need to write a policy and an ordinance. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a good process. We're not talking about all four. We need the same thing. Yeah, all we're, all and four, all we're talking about right now is yeah. just Carter Way. The right. other yeah. three, they can still get in and out. That's mm -hmm. right. And if they're, if, they're taking into, if they're taking in at a later date, that would be under a policy. But right now, all you're talking about is something to... Something yeah, to, I'm looking for something right now to address this concern with, with Carter Way. We, we've got an issue with those residents live on Carterway. We've also got an issue with the problem with the fact that we've got a property owner out there that's allowing those people to come and go, and, and they can barely come and go. They're bogging down left and right trying to get out of their own home property. Do you want us to try to, uh, in the, before Monday, or maybe Tuesday night, the latest, try to find a contract that can give us a price to fix Carterway to bring it to you Tuesday night? Doing emergency services? I think we need to know what, one way or the other what that's going to cost. We need to know that. <coughs> if it's under 100,000 emergency services, we'll have to do it by service. Right. It'll be under 100,000. It will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me. <laughs> Depends on who's Don't waste his time. 99,999. Yeah, Ted, don't waste his time. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll. I mean, is that, we'll, is that we'll, 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 we really got to, we got to do something about that. We got to do I, I agree. But if we condemn it, then there's, no, there's no question about them that people asking about you. Know, they asked you to take their road in. Okay. okay. They didn't ask. Yeah. We had an emergency yeah. situation. We had to we, we condemn the whole road. We took the road. Okay. okay. Keep road. in mind, keep in mind that condemnation is not a short term issue. It takes a while. To go through that process. My issue would be to go ahead and make that repair, and then if you want to address it from that standpoint later on on that particular road, go through that condemnation you process. Can't make, you can't make it go faster than that. <laughs> well, keep no, in mind. Are you going to have to? Because, because you may of also the, be able to pay the street in gold by the time you pay for the condemnation process on each one of those. Individual. Because you because you've got to get you got to you got to have. Uh, appraisals done and uh, their, their, uh, their commercial appraisals, even though they're a residential house, you got to have commercial appraisals done uh, and then they have that. to have negotiations. <laughs> and this is 75 to 90 day process. If it was easy, the other guy would have come. Do, do an emergency service and be done with it. <laughs> All right, at this point in time, can we agree to go ahead and do an emergency service on part of what? Everybody okay with that? I'll have you a price from under your sheet. Okay. You'll have it ready for us so that it possibly can be an agenda item for Tuesday night? Yes, sir. Thank you. Do my best. We know you can have it. All right, <laughs> next. <laughs> Is everybody ready for a break or what? Commissioner Browner just took one. I think ready for a break. All right, let's just take about a 10-minute break and then we'll come back.